can tell you that Celt potted pink and black. And so the first match over on table two of the day is going its full distance. Can play pretty well in his first match. He scored pretty well when he got in. So we feel quite good going into this one. He's such a hard player to categorise and classify, isn't he, Michael? He's unconventional, but very effective. Yeah, he's not a flair player, so I think people don't notice him as much. You know, does that sound weird? But um, but he's a, you know the balls disappear, and that's all that matters. <laughs> uh, and he's very very good at it. One thing he is criticised for is not going into the pack as early as some other of the, the top players generally do. But I think he just plays his own game. And from what he's achieved so far, how can you possibly say he's doing anything incorrect? Yes, definitely. I think with that sort of your philosophy on going, oh, your break build is, is down to you. You've got to feel comfortable with it. So if you want to pick them off, then that's how you're going to play and there's pro, pros and cons to both 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 ways of going around it, about it but um, like you say he's, he's doing alright <laughs> so it must be working for him Have you played him much, Michael? I haven't played him a lot at all. I can't remember. Um, obviously, I've seen him play quite a lot. But uh, no, I've not got much experience about playing him. You get the impression he's one of those players who makes you think outside the box, makes you uncomfortable because he doesn't do things in an orthodox manner. His technique is orthodox, but the way he approaches the game isn't. Yeah, I mean, for me, he's just he's, he comes across just so reliable as a player. Uh, if there's 50 there, we'd probably get 50, and that is, you know, that's it's although it's not like I say flair. Um, that's what I have, that's how good you know he just knocks the balls in at the end of the day. So you know you're in for a tough game, whatever. That really went for there, you know, he got a good white. So he's not leaving so much if he missed it. He seems very mindful of that, where the white's going, where some players just go for the pot and see where it lands. That's not bad. He's in a really tough spot now. There's not many places you can land. It might be the hit and hope, or he could play off the, the right hand side two rails and try and clip one on the way back. I think that's what he's playing. Foul from this. Things when we five. Bye.
being in a snooker like this is never an appetising experience, but when there's been fortune involved in putting you there, I think psychologically, Michael, it's more and more difficult to cope with. Thank you. Yeah, it can be a roller coaster. He'd be, he'd be sitting there happy that he's played a, a decent shot, things in a bit of trouble, there's no, no danger. And then all of a sudden he comes back to the table and he's in a world of trouble. Oh, so, yeah, it's. Um, things are for. Yeah, it's, it's, it can be really tough at, at times mentally. That's what the best of the best cope with better than most. Well, he wanted to flick off the red. Caught an awful lot of it. But I'll tell you what, that could have finished a lot worse. Yeah, it's not the end of the world, like you say. Um, he's got a tough pot here. It's nowhere, nowhere gimme. But is it that lovely? That's what? a really good shot. He's coming down, he looked at the black there. He's thinking, how am I going to get, what am I going to do next? And there's nobody better at this than uh, Ding Jun Wee. looking near where the colours might go if it pops the pink because it might tie the pink up if it pops it Fire. now he can maybe flick the red away from the, the black spot when he pots the black here and then he's sort of slowly manoeuvring the balls into a better position See if it's on. Tampered queuing shouldn't be a problem, and it wasn't. 13. Now, Michael, you've played Ding in a ranking event in his home country in the People's Republic of China. That must be some experience. Yes, it's a fantastic experience. Um, everybody wants you to lose, <laughs> obviously. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, it's, it's great. 20. You know, it's usually packed and you know there's a lot of watching on TV and they're the games that you that you practice for really that you you want to be involved in uh, and plus he's you know an unbelievable player and 21. a really good guy as well and what he's done there you see like I was saying on the black he got on the black nudges that red out the way and he's just 26. slowly but surely getting these balls in the position he wants them. It's such a high skill level to do what he does like that. He's not smashed the balls everywhere. Just a fantastic player. And this is Ding's calling card. He's a master craftsman around the black spot. His cue ball control really is world class. I'd go to say it's one of the best I've ever seen. Um, I think the only problem with it is he tries to put the white in such tight spots and now and again if he's not quite perfect he's, he runs out of position but when he's on it's like watching a computer game it's just incredible. Forty-two. 
43. Only played each other twice as professionals. In fact, when Jan first played Ding, he was a, a schoolboy, mere 13 years of age. That was in the Asian Tour event over in China in 2013. Their Fifth. only world ranking meeting was in the semi final of the UK Championship in 2019 when Ding prevailed 6 2. 51. Of course, Ding went on to be the champion, overcoming Stephen Maguire in the final. And I don't want to say this, Michael, but so far, at least, that's his last hurrah. Hasn't really shown up since. 59. But you know, for the good of the game, we all want Ding to be playing nicely. Well, this is an example of it here. This is absolute masterclass of break building. It really is. Like he hasn't gone into them yet, and they weren't easy. But if you just watch him, like he's always getting just the right angle on the black, so he's 66. perfect to get on the next red. And it's just <laughs> amaze balls when I watch him. It's just so good. 67. That, that wasn't an easy shot, <laughs> but he just nails it again, and he's perfect on the red. 74. 75. You can probably tell I'm a big fan. <laughs> yeah, I could see you turning green with envy, Michael, actually, as he's put this break together, although... I will say this, you've knocked in a few big breaks in your time as well. 81. Oh no, Phil, he's not that good. <laughs> 82. It's just the the ease, the consummate ease with which he builds breaks. 82. I know it's not the highest, most pressurised environment, but I think what we've seen in this first frame, good signs. Definitely. You know, this is Ding when he's playing, playing properly. Just um, crazy good. Really hope he pots this. That's a shame. A break of that quality deserved to end in three figures. It did not, but Ding's 97 was more than sufficient to get off to a flying start against his much younger compatriot.
We've just seen why Ding Junwei has won 22 professional tournaments, including 14 world ranking titles. And of those 14, five came in one particularly spectacular season. Second frame. He's Yum been in out something of a drought in terms of lifting trophies of late. But you know what they say, that old cliche, Michael. Form is temporary, class is permanent. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, what we've just, you know, <coughs> what we've just seen there was a master class. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's all downhill from here, though. <laughs> Yes, those five ranking events in one season, Shanghai Masters, Indian Open, International Championship, German Masters, and capped off with the China Open in Beijing. To win two tournaments in a season these days with the competition, Michael, is a, a phenomenal achievement. To win five ranking titles in the same campaign, you can't quite comprehend how good that is. No, it's, it's just incredible. Um, I mean, I think I heard John Higgins say the other week, if you just win one, uh, you're happy in the year. And that's John Higgins. So, yes, it just shows you how hard it is. Um, but, you know, like I was saying, he's an elite level player when he's playing. And y you can't believe he's not in the top four all the time for me. It just shows you how hard it is. Never harder, Michael, you know that from personal experience. You've been around for many a year, and while people debate whether the top players are as good as they were five, ten years ago, what is beyond debate is that down the ranks, into the 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever, the standard has never, ever been higher. Definitely not. I think that's where the big improvements come. The top players have always been amazing, but... Um Number 70 in the world N today is, well, in a, a different level to what number 70 was 15 years ago. I think we saw that last year. I think Jordan Jordan Brown won an event and he was ranked 70 odd. I think is that right? You probably know better than me. I think he was just in the 80s actually. I mean, if that would have happened 15 years ago, everybody nobody could believe it. But now, even though it was a shock result you're not really that surprised uh, you know it can happen taking on the red to the middle I thought it was very interesting last night One. Michael watching the Masters final Neil Robertson resumed with a 5-3 lead after the first session. And a couple of times early in that decisive session, he purposely left tempters for Hawkins. Hawkins went for them, missed, and on each occasion it cost him the frame. Now that was a tempter for Jan, Six. and it could cost Ding the frame. Yes, if Ding, uh, Jan plays like he did in his first match, he'd, I'd be surprised if he don't win from Seven. here. But it can go wrong, so... I don't know where the red above the black, it's not tiny up, whether it's on the spot if he pots the black, but he'll be mindful he wants to move it at some point. But like we were saying before, he might just pick them off a bit. That's how he plays. 30. I know, Michael, you've had a lot of success as a junior player. How about this one? When you were 15, could you comprehend being part of a winning World Cup team? But that's what Jan was at that very tender age. Still one of the great accomplishments for me in snooker history. He and Zhou Yulong. Zhou was a veteran of 17. Yeah. He was old time, wasn't he, at that stage, uh, Yao. Um, yeah, incredible. And uh, 21. The, the, 
so experienced. That's why he's so good now. One of the reasons he's so experienced that, you know, he's got more experience now than some 30-year-olds have. Uh, he's, you know, he's won big events. Um, he feels completely comfortable in all the arenas, and it's just, it's one of the, you know, it's another uh, asset really he's got. Amazing. Yeah, he seems to have been around for quite some time, and yet he doesn't celebrate his 22nd birthday until halfway through next month. I think I qualified for my first venue when I was 20, 21, the UK Championship. And when I walked in that player's room, I was like an autograph hunter. Like I was looking at top 16 players. Alan McManus, who I was playing, I was like, wow, it's Alan McManus. <laughs> Well, given Alan's knowledge of the game and the way he commentates these days, I'm still that way. Wow, it's Alan McManus when I'm working with him. Yes, what a legend. Twenty-nine. Good solid pot there, that. It can be missed. I don't know whether he's got a perfect angle, is he? Can he come off the two rails? I think that's what he's looking at. Yeah, he's played that really well. That can go wrong, that. 36. Looks like we're getting close to the first result of the day on table two. 37. And it's looking mighty favourable for Martin Gould, a former Championship League winner, of course. He's 34 ahead with 27 on against Matt Selt in their decider. Taking no risks. So Selt needs a couple 44. of snookers. I think Jan's a bit disappointed, he's got the wrong angle there, he's just a bit high I think, so whether the screw back with sides on to get on the red in the same pocket, I'm not sure. Comparing it with that break that Ding made, that Ding, Ding in the last frame, he was always perfect on the, on the colour that he was on to get on the next red, so he didn't have to play any special shots. He just had enough there, so he was all right, but these little things that go wrong, you know, you can easily run out of position. Fifty-three. <laughs> what we've rediscovered this morning, as we have done, for the first five groups, these Rasson tables manufactured in, in China are playing beautifully. We've seen a whole succession of big breaks and the players really warming to them. And conditions, Michael, make so much difference, don't they? So much difference to a player's <laughs> mindset, to the overall standard, and you have to say to the entertainment value as well. Oh, without doubt, it's it's not it's quite good weather for it. You know, it's quite dry. It's not humid, which doesn't uh, you know doesn't make the tables play very well at all. And with these new super fine cloths, the balls move around. They they, they move. The the consistent uh, the reaction you get, and it, like you say, if these players are feel comfortable on them as well, they're going to score. And these are top quality players as well. So yes, it's all in the mix. That. Now, I'm going to ask you a question in the next frame. 66. Which I think you'll enjoy. You can publicly vent your spleen. Let's put it that way. I'm not going to give you any clues about what the question is, but... 67. When we're really in the next frame, I'll let you have a right good moan up. And I love a good moan. You said it. I was thinking it. I'm actually excited.
74. Now in the first frame, Ding was unable to make a century, missed that tough last red. A really big number on here for Jan. And remember, if he could get into the 75. the 130s, that would be a realistic target for the £500 group high break price. Eighty two. Possible one for one available, although ninety with the position of the red towards bulk. 91. Maybe it's going to be slightly lower than that. Yeah, we could probably use the pink to get on the red and then the pink come back down the table for the clearance. That's what he might do now. 98. Made a break of 111 in highlighting his 3 1 win over Ali Carter. So this is for his second century of the day. Just lost the cue ball slightly. 104. Now that shot, and indeed one earlier into the yellow bag, underlines Michael just what a, a straight shooter he is. Yes, his uh, his cue action is very, very reliable, very simple. Not much can go wrong, and when he's yeah. uh, sighting it well and feeling good, you don't Moving fancy him missing anything like that, really. Sixty. Easy game. Hundred and twenty. Well, we used to to joke and say that when we, of course, all know differently. But I think when the top guys are playing well these days, to them it is easy. Twenty-five. He does look it, but players are like swans above the water. They're all graceful, but under it. I can assure you, they're uh, working as hard as they can. 100%. Love the analogy, and I love that total clearance from Yan Bing Tao. What a response. Ding wins the first frame with 97. Back comes Yan with a 138 total clearance. Quality here, it is one frame each.
So this is one of the pots that Yan Bing Tao knocked in in the, the previous frame when he cleared the entire table. This is the, the second one, just floating it in from distance. I was really impressed with that, not just the way he compiled the break, and let's remember he started off with a, a risky red to middle, but also in the light of the fact that Ding had played superbly in the first. And if Yan was at all rocked by that, he did not show it. Third frame. Ding's on to... Now he's top quality, he's doing all that. He just get on with his own game and put all the balls. That's what he did. So the story on table two is that Martin Gould did beat Matt Selt 3-2. The second match over there is about to start at any moment. It is the defending Championship League winner, Karen Wilson, against Jordan Brown, the Welsh Open champion. There's always a danger there going playing that safety shot, but he's the white's gone a bit up the table, so although he's left a pot, it's not an absolute gimme. But he shook that brilliant. One. Ding looks like he's on it today. See if he can win the frame and I can purr some more. <coughs> well, there's something subtle here when Yan Bing Tao made the safety mistake. We saw Ding jump up, come to the table. And he did so out of the right-hand chair because he's the, the lower-ranked player of the two. Now, for years, Five. Ding, head and shoulders, has been the, the highest-ranked Chinese player. Currently, with a loss of those 200,000 ranking points from the 2019 UK Championship, he's plummeted to 29th on the world list. He's the fourth highest ranked Chinese player at the moment. Zhao Zintong, the, the reigning UK champion, he's ninth. Yeah. Yan Ping Tao is 15th. Zhou Yulong is 18th. And when you consider Ding is only one in two places respectively above Zhao Gudong and Lu Ning, who would have thought that it was possible? He's the fourth highest ranked Chinese player now. It's possible in the, the coming weeks and months that he might fall down as low as sixth. I can't imagine he will stay there. Well, if he plays like he can, most of the tour will be ranked one below, one below they are now. Um, if He's just showing it here. You know, the red he played on uh, below the pink. When he played from the vault colours, he got absolutely perfect on it. Now the pink's getting freer. And look, he got on that red perfectly to be able to flick that red out this is not luck this is just incredible just amazing break building Twenty six. better side maybe to keep it up 27. That's about as loose as he's been in the past, in the two visits he's had.
34. Wiggled in, but he's back in good position again. The red at the side of the black is causing him a few problems. He can't obviously get on the black, the, the other side of it. So, will he be able to play on the pink here in the middle and then he can flick the reds open? I don't know. Yeah, I think that's what he's played. Thank you. 42. See, he's looking about where the balls are going to land. He don't just he's not going into him, just hoping for luck. He's just trying to play a cannon. There you go. You see, he knew if he'd have hit that too hard, the red goes too close to the black, and with the reds being where they are, the two reds together, he might have been on one. So he's played a nice it. little deaf, deaf cannon there. Brilliant. Forty-nine. And it's so easy when you're playing shots like that to forget about the pot, and you miss the pink. There does seem a real intensity to his game, and that's really good to see. Started his season a little later than most actually did pretty well in the English Open, got to the last 16 before losing to John Higgins. 56. He also lost to Higgins 4-3 in the first round of the Champion of Champions, when really he should have won 4-2. Missed frame ball in that match. That's for the UK Championship. Lost in the last 64 to Sam Craigie. Lost in the first round of the, the Scottish Open to Zhang Gander. And the same fate befell him in the German Masters. Losing out to Mark Davis in the opening round. Ooh, so much excellence, but that one 63. is it towards the far jaw, and of course when you catch as much of the far jaw as that, you're not going to, you're not going to knock them in. No, it's uh, the way he's been playing, a surprising miss, but it's a hard game. <laughs> he's only missed it by a little bit, and now... Jan's got a good chance to get back into the frame at least. One. I think when you were talking about his results there, sometimes, although he might be playing pretty well, um, it's as if you need to, to get that momentum again to start winning matches. Six. So he needs to sort of work, stay, stick at it, keep doing what he's doing, and eventually, if his level's high enough, he'll eventually start winning. But it's as if you have to pay the game back a bit. Seven. Now, Jan, considering these arm is lubricated, and he knows he's playing well, he will view this as a really good opportunity to pinch the frame at this visit. Yes, a couple of reds are close to the top cushion. 14. 
but both are well within his capabilities. Without a doubt, and obviously Jan's a bit used to winning more recently. 50. His form's better, so he'll probably feel a bit more comfortable in these positions than a lot of other players would. So he's not. He's a bit low on this red. So he's going to play a cannon. So it, it could 22. go wrong, but it probably won't if he drops it in. Twenty-three. Now that complicates the issue somewhat because. The pink, OK, it's not under a cushion. But it's considerably more awkward than being on its own spot. And he will need it. It's all come from when he, a few reds ago, he played on, he played on the black and he didn't quite get the right angle. So it's just so important to really be mindful of getting that perfect angle. And now he's got a few puzzles to solve. 31. Good pace on that one. The last thing he wanted there was to leave himself straight, i.e. the cue ball tight on the top cushion. Yeah, if he'd have picked up with his hand, he'd have put it there. So when he pots the black, he'll be 19 adrift. That means he needs all six colours afterwards. Deep screw and reverse side. Well done. But I was saying he, he needs the awkward pink. And, of course, position off that pink on black. This table very reactive. It was for the first five groups, and nothing has changed clearly today. Screwing back is so easy. Yeah, you can tell the way the, the white's skidding. When they screw back, it sort of stops a little bit, and then it it comes back with a spin. So, and the breaks you're seeing is showing you the tables are playing nice. So now he's got to get a good angle on the blue to get a good angle on the pink to be able to get on the black. 53. Such an important juncture of this match. You might say, such an important juncture of the group. Fifty-eight. That's pretty good. I think that's perfect. Just part this. You'll have a bit of topspin on the white, so it'll bring it close to the black. Sixty-four. Professional snooker these days. What a tough school. Ding, in with 63, missed a red to middle. Yan Ping Tao punished him to the full. Ding, just touching there. I don't think you can quite believe it. 
but you better believe it, that's what Yan Bing Tao does. He's a formidable match player, and he leads 2-1. If you like high standard snooker, you will be reveling in this match. Myself and Michael Holt certainly are. What snooker is being produced? If you're just joining us, Ding Jun Wei won the first frame with a 97 break. Four. Yan Bing Tao Yan Bing replied Tao. with 138, the highest break of the group so far. Ding was in with 63 in the third. Caught the far jaw of a pot on a red to middle. And Yan ran 71 to steal it on the black. That's why the younger man leads 2-1. I can tell you on table two, it's also been a really good start for Jordan Brown. He's going to lead Kyron Wilson 1-0. Just a matter of whether he can do so with the aid of a century. Perfect break off there by Jan. There was no out. The only shot he could play was that sort of dump shot where he was still leaving him something. And he might go for this red in the middle. The right middle, not the left one. Well, I was saying we might see a century on table two. Looks very much that way now. Yeah, the referee, Rob Spencer, calling out 104. So Jordan Brown needs pink and black to make the ideal start for his Group 6 campaign. One. Very nicely done. Three centuries in this group, in this session already. Shoulders slumped. Didn't quite get hold of the cue ball. Yeah, he can still get on a red, but he's got to just dribble this in, I think. Gone into him. 
Yeah, I was always middle uh, corner back that was. But he's, he's still landed or okay to be honest. He's got a red in the Fourteen. middle. Jumping tower 14. In comparison with club tables, the toughest pockets on these world tour tables are undoubtedly the middles. You've got to be so accurate. One. Now, before Ding gets into this break, Michael, I did promise you a couple of frames ago the opportunity to have a, a good moan up. We were talking about conditions, how good they are at this tournament with these rass on tables, which play beautifully. You've been a pro now for many years. What about the worst conditions you've ever experienced? Five. Um, I can't remember too many one-off matches, but I just know that when it's you turn up a tournament and it's it's quite humid. Um, Six. You just know the table's going to play awful, and with these pockets. If the, if there's no slippiness on the cloth, they play super tight. The cushions are quite pingy. Um, it seems inconsistent at times, and then the balls don't move either. So I think one that sticks out only because it was a World Championship was what I played at the Crucible. Um, I played Mark Williams there, and we had we played on a table that played. It was comical about how bad it was playing. It was apparently the heat got to it, so the the cushions were just like s crazy bouncy. So that obviously that sticks in my mind because if 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 they're not, I'll probably win the tournament. You see, I'm not supposed Thanks. to laugh in a commentary box. <laughs> oh dear. What are you laughing at, Phil? You're deadpan. Very good at that. What I will say about conditions is that Ding has won so many tournaments. And with his game, which is built on precision, it's remarkable, actually, 16. that he's won some of these events where conditions aren't all that clever. He just finds a way. Well, he's found a way there to take the, the cue ball 17. through the reds and spread them deliciously. The only problem is that rogue red came down and it's blocked his path to the black. Yes, can always go wrong that he played it perfect look with the with the white is, but the reds um got in the path of the black, so he can have a go at this blue where the reds are, he knows that it's a he'll keep it with the red near the corner pocket next. Or is he gonna play safe? Maybe put the browns on the side rail now. No. Good save dip. Danger in week 17.
Well, from distance, always risk attached. And now Ding, having spread the reds, he's the one who's going to suffer. Looks like Jan is going to be the beneficiary. Yes, I feel like all I've done is say the good things about one. Ding. Well, I was going to say Jan's got a great chance to, to win now, but I think he's gone too far by the look of his face or the reaction. Well, if he has, that's clumsy. I think he's just upset he's straight, I think. But he's perfect and all the fuss is about. You know, that really does get under player oh, skins. Right. Players in the past have had a habit of doing that. Looking to the sky, looking really upset, giving the impression they're out of position when in fact they're okay. You must have experienced that, Michael, over the years. Yeah, old school tricks they are. Um, you get you start to get ready for your next shot and then the next thing you know, nice. you're watching another 70 points go in. Um, like you said, I've been around a while, I've seen it all. It's less nowadays than it used to be. Yes, in the, the old days, I'm sure he won't mind me mentioning this, Mark Williams 16. was guilty of that on many occasions, and it was quite amusing, actually, when you're, you're watching it and you're... You're watching his opponent's expressions Seven. when he knocks in a red that he'd given the impression he wasn't on. I've seen Jan do that before, actually. He's got a good chance here. He's even got a red safe fish, so he's, he's getting in front now, isn't he? So he'll look like he's he'll feel like he's gonna win from there from here. Can't speak highly enough of Yan Bing Tao. Thirty. So dedicated. So tough. Terrific temperament. 31. And what a match player. Yes, brilliant. Um, can win any event, and he probably will. <laughs> Won the World Amateur Championship at the age of 14. 36. Youngest of a ranking event finalist. Yeah, he's obviously got incredible composure to be able to do it on the big stage, which is non-negotiable, really. If you haven't got that, it's uh, virtually impossible to win. But, um, yeah, he's um, got, got it all, really. Forty-three. And I'm not basing this on a, a best of five, of course. But there's no doubt there's a, a changing of the guard in terms of Chinese snooker. Ding has been the man for many a year. 50. Now the likes of Yan Bing Tao and Xiao Zin Tong are following in his footsteps. 51. I think there's still some life in Ding yet, though. I think if he gets 58. gets some momentum, and he's still obviously capable of a high level, um, a super high level. Um, if he can get that, like I say, get that full momentum, he's, he's still got years in him yet. But it's just so hard at to get that momentum at the moment with the players around. Yeah, I think so. 
58. The break ends at 58. And indeed, so uh, does the match. That really was a lovely little match of just four frames. But we